Well, let's start from the fact that um, sandboxes were here for a while. They were used in a lot of different places, uh, even before um, uh, anti-APT solutions emerged. And um, originally, an anti-virus or anti-malware industry, they were used as a backend in a uh, detection infrastructure or anti-malware infrastructure, among with a, a lot of different technologies like emulator, memory, memory analysis, and sandboxes uh, never were core technology there. They were just one of the part of the infrastructure. We're extracting data. They, they might be classified some data, and they were targeting mass malware. And it's kind of defined the way sandboxing were working in, in this detection infrastructure. In a, and in a sandbox, um, uh, an anti-APT solution uh, has a little bit different role. And maybe not everybody aware about, about what exactly is anti-APT solution I'm talking about. So uh, anti-APT solution I'm going to talk about today is a, a network appliance-based uh, anti-APT solutions, which uses sandbox as a core technology. And they use it as, as a core technology because obviously, like if you're talking about theoretically, that when you have a sample and you run it, sample has to expose all behavior in the same way it's going to expose it in the real machine in the sandbox, theoretically. And you know, when the sandbox is installed in, in a network appliance, in a customer um, network, it means customer doesn't need to send out any documents, any files. It keeps everything in the company. Basically, customer has that mini anti-malware infrastructure, mini detection infrastructure, where sandbox is the main solution. Well, unfortunately, ah, and yeah, if sandboxes detect something, it reports to administrator, and then administrator takes some remediation actions and you know uh, try to stop uh, APT attack. Well, unfortunately, uh, when anti-APT solutions emerged, they start using the same traditional an analysis process as. Uh, sandbox, uh, the same way sandboxes were used in anti-malware detection infrastructure. It's super simple, and it's based on that you have an image of operation system and some installed application there, and you just create a snapshot, and then you run the snapshot, open or run the file inside the snapshot, analyze it for a couple of minutes, and then, you know, based on an extraction infor extracted information that might be behavior logs, it might be memory, uh, network traffic, you classify if this file malicious or not. And then you restore snapshot and run next file and next file and next file. And if anti-malware infrastructure um, built to analyze millions of files per day, then anti-APT solution is not for that. It's for analyzing actually files from the customer network. It's only files which came or came out from the customer network. So the, the, the type of files are a little bit different. And this traditional sandbox analysis process has a major weaknesses. And today I'm going to talk about them, not about the core sandbox technology. So I'm going to talk about how we're using uh, sandboxes and why it's bad and it's why it's not going to work out before we change the scheme how we, we use sandboxes. And this is main uh, weaknesses I see in the current sandboxes. It's a restricted analysis time because we have timeout. It's predictable environment because we have uh, all these snapshots which we just repeat all over and over again. And it's limited context because when we analyze file inside the sandbox, what we have inside sandbox? We have file. We don't know where this file from might be, if you like, if we know the original name of the file, but we, know, we don't know current directory, we don't know command line, and so on. And uh, I will start talking about the analysis time problem. And you know, if you have just the, e the simplest uh, sandbox, this is easiest way to evade it. It has two minutes timeout, malware sleeps for 20 minutes, and then execute the rest of the payload. For sure, everybody knows that, and it's why when sandboxes try to analyze malware, it's actually handle specific functions, uh, API and system calls, which are responsible for uh, execution delaying. And you know, if sandbox sees that um, unknown sample tries to delay execution for longer than it and should, or what sandbox consider it should, it just patches parameters of this function and you know, just let uh, the sample continue the execution. Well, unfortunately, it doesn't help all this. 
This is a real example, and that's why I put some assembler, and you know, for normal people, I put some should the C implementation of that. And this malware is not just delaying the execution, but it actually checking if the execution were delayed. It checks the timestamp first time, then it sleeps, then it checks timestamp second time, and it then compares these two timestamps, and if it's not big enough, then malware assumes the time was manipulated and it doesn't execute. And you know, you can say, well, well, let's just change the timestamp too. And here we go, there is another example. Now it checks two different sources of time information, not only timestamp, but also get to count, and the same comparison, it actually checks that it executed. Uh, the delay, the execution will be delayed. And you know, we can say, yeah, let's just instrument all this function and try to fake the parameters. And I mean, this is all possible. It's what actually sandboxes involved so much that they're able to patch any parameter, any function they want. The problem is, you know, there are a million ways to do that. You can check time on the internet, you can get system time, you can do whatever you want. And one way to detect it is detect that malware actually checks the time. You know, this, this evasion attempt that malware tried to check the time, but you know, it's, it also doesn't work always. And this is another even trickier example of timing attack, where instead of just checking time, malware assumed that if it's gonna be executed inside the sandbox, sandbox gonna patch the time. So what malware does, it creates the second thread, and it decrypts and execute payload in the second thread, when first thread sleeps for 60 minutes and terminate the process. So what happened if sandbox patches the sleep? Well, process is going to be terminated in zero seconds, and we're not going to see any, any payload and any execution. There is another example when it's the threads malware uses processes, when it drops the file, create the common pro prompt process with the parameters to create third process from the dropped file. And then it sleeps for 20 seconds, and then it deletes drop file. What's going to happen if you patch sleep? Well, it's going to delete the dropped file, and you're not, never going to see what's going to be inside there, because files get deleted. So, and there are a million cases like this. So, if your sandbox try to manipulate with time, it, it should be really aware about the processes, threads, the different time checks, and so on. But let's talk about the next problem. It's a predictable environment. We always restore the snapshot over and over again. And this is kind of answer to Maria question, uh, Maria's question, what malware, in, from the previous uh, presentation, what malware can do it? Malware does fingerprinting of the sandbox every time. And we start to seeing more and more again, it's two different times at hardware-based fingerprinting, when it just checks for uh, hard drive properties, devices properties, physical, virtual memory, everything related to hardware and software when it just collects some information about computer name, username, what's, which software installed. And if two years we saw it maybe once in a while, now we see it every week. Every week when some kind of malware collects the data about the machine, send it outside, and then, you know, server can respond or do not respond. And, you know, even if you send box able to randomize all data and send fake data, it doesn't mean you actually know what the, the actor expects to see in this result. And maybe even you, if you uh, perfectly randomize everything, it still doesn't work. Also the problem when it targets the POS malware or ATM based malware or SCADA based malware, then if you don't have the specific processes or software installed on your image, the malware is just not going to run. And the third problem is a limited context when you have only file in your sandbox, you don't know working directory, you don't know command line, and we all well aware that a lot of ha a lot of APTs are actually hack tools. They require a command line, and if you just have a file, it's just not going to work. You're not going to detect it, even if you randomize and improve your sandbox score very well. So we have these three problems, and I want to start solving them from the first one, or actually from the second one, uh, from predictable environment, because I think it's the easiest thing we can do. It's a custom images. When you network appliance in a customer network, you actually know your customer. You know what kind of machine the customer is going to use, and you can customize the image, install all software the same way customer uses on real machine. You basically try to mimic the real machine which is going to be ex infected. So the the actor of APT attack doesn't really a, a, will not be able to recognize if it's a sandbox or a real machine. And for this, you can start from custom 
custom images. But the problem is, what if you have a you know 50,000 uh, machine endpoint uh, customer? You're going to create how many? 20, 30 different custom images. You're going to run each sample on all of them. It's too 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 expensive. So what we're going to do to solve this? We're going to install endpoint clients on the all clients machine, and this endpoint is going to collect the data about environment of this machine. It might be not. It shouldn't be antiviruses. It, it should be just a very thin clients which is collect data and then it groups this machine in the different groups based on this data, based on what kind of environment install. And you know, here we go. We have 30 different groups. We prepared 30 different custom images and we need to analyze each sam sample only once in each in one custom image because we know exactly from which machine the sample came and you know when we send this and also since we have an endpoint we um, we able not only sniff samples from the network from the wire but also take files from the endpoints and when we're taking files from the endpoints, when you know file gets open or you know file started a new process or file loaded to another process of the DLL, what do we know? Exactly, we know execution context of this file. So if it's a hack tool which uh, actor uses to you know exploit some vulnerability or doing some whatever it he wants to do and using common line parameters. We're going to see these common line parameters. And you know, I looked at um, uh, equation APT samples yesterday night and I saw that most of them just modules. You know, it's just a modular based malware and if you just have one module you try to run it in a sandbox, it's not going to run because it requires REST components, the rest of the DLLs, other executable files, other DLL uh, drivers. And if you don't have all these components in your sandbox, each separated component just not going to work. So what can we do? We can actually see the load modules or opened files, the open handle for the files, and we see that these files are known or are untrusted. We can copy them to original location, but, but to the sandbox, basically completely to completely mimic the original infected machine inside the sandbox. I mean, yes, it's a pretty complicated engineering problem. I don't say that I, I don't try to say it's super easy. It's really complicated, but I, we believe it's possible. And you know, the execution context would and, and points in the real machine would really help with that. And also, um, so we kind of solved, you know, tackled these two problems. We still have a time, right? Time problem, you know, you always have to restart the snapshot. You analyze file after file. Wait, you actually don't. You don't need to restart snapshot. You don't need to analyze file by file. Does actually user restart its com his computer every time it starts or open new document? No, right? It, it just starts the program, open the document, and it doesn't restart his own computer all the time. It's exactly what can we can do in the sandbox when we're doing continuous <coughs> sandboxing. When we, when we have a new file and how many executable files or how many documents you have per day? Millions? No, it's not millions. It's probably in the worst scenario, hundreds. And you know what you do? You know the group, you know the custom image, you just open one file and you know, for example, this file decided, okay, I'm going to sleep for 20 hours. Let's do not patch, let it sleep. Just open another file and then another file. And then when you analyze the system, dynamically extract the information about behavior, you can say, okay, this is enough, I already know this is benign. Or you can say, wow, this is enough and I already know it's suspicious because I saw that, 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 and that. And you can do it all in the same system, you know, and even if you want to mimic everything completely, you can create in your custom image, you can create, you know, 20, 30 different users with the real names of real machines in the customer network and you start each sample as the user with a particular name. It means when this APT attack would start on such a sandbox, it's, it's going to be really tricky for an um, actor to recognize if it's a sandbox or if it's a real machine of this user. 
And you know, then you need to restart this machine only in uh, this sandbox and this snapshot. You only need to restart in some really critical state when something went wrong. When in these cases, you always can restart all the samples again. You know, might be one by one, one might be with some different, um, you know, type of analysis and stuff. But you're still able to continue sandbox, and it's kind of sandbox becomes a shadow of the real machine. It's always executing, it's always extracting data. And you know, if infection happens uh, seven days ago and then uh, actors start acting, well, okay, we will see it in the seven days. Okay, and this is three solutions, and you know, uh, how you can, you might be noticed that I didn't mention anything about the core of sandbox, about how we manipulate the data in sandbox, how we can randomize or detect evasion and try to do anti-evasion. No, it's all was about how should we use the sandbox. And this is my point I want to emphasize, that sandboxing were evolving dramatically in these two years. We spent tons of time trying to you know, do the best and try to you know, execute, randomize, um, do different uh, anti-evasion attempts and stuff, but we are always making the same mistake. We are using the sandbox in the old-fashioned way. And what we should do, the, the, the way we are using sandbox should evolve. We should start mimic the real user, start to show the APT that it's actually a real user. Well, thank you very much. Oops. Thank you, everyone.